In this week's video, we look at mooring on finger pond turns, even though we're in the med. We make recommendations on what kind of springs you should use, and also the type of lines. That's pretty important. As usual, we're going to show you how we do it, that is, rig our chains, and our springs, and also our rubber dumbbell snubbers on our breast, or spring lines as we call them. We're also going to show you some of the amazing photos that we took in the last electric storm. Stay with us to the end. Last time on SV and Pavidus, we told you about our long journey, 600 and odd miles, from Turkey through Greece down to Cyprus. We record all of this information automatically on our Garmin InReach, and it's uploaded to a web page. Of course, patrons get free access to this web page, and they can track us in real time. As there was virtually no wind for most of the way, we used 150 litres of diesel. We averaged 6.8 knots and our top speed was 8.3. This is a really handy bit of kit, it records automatically and we're glad we've got it. But it doesn't just track in real time, we can also get weather information and send and receive texts. It's a really good piece of kit. If enough of you want us to do it, we'll show you all around Carpus Gate Marina. It really is a nice place to be, so different from where we were last year. We're really enjoying it. There's lots of facilities and lots of really nice, friendly people. There's actually three boats here who are patrons. Another week or so should see our residency documents arrive. And of course, while we're here, we'll be telling you all about the island, taking you on a few trips, and planning all of those maintenance jobs that have got to be done this winter. Anyway, back to the mooring. And most of the places that you go in the Mediterranean, you'll be med mooring inside a marina. The pontoons don't float like they do in the UK or in the States. Because there's no tide, they don't need to, or very little tide. But there are a few marinas, like this one, that actually have both floating pontoons and fingers. It makes it easy for you to access your boat, whether you park bows to or stern to. The good thing about finger pontoons is that they're very gentle on the boat. But it's important you get your lines on so that the boat is still free to move and the lines aren't snatching or jerking. The best way to do this is as we show here, in our opinion, and whether you're stern to or bow to, you want to be able to access the boat easily without falling between the boat and the finger. Let's have a look at the equipment we use. Firstly, there's our mooring springs. We use a stainless steel spring which is made from 11mm 316 stainless steel. They're looped over at the ends so that they can't pull out. Now we've seen other types of springs, like these ones, and they failed. So, unfortunately, we can't recommend them. The type of springs that we use are actually on our website, in our shop. Go and take a look. I think we've got you a pretty good deal on them. Now we also use this type of rubber snubber and we use them on our breast or spring lines and the reason we use rubber is if they accidentally hit the boat they won't damage it. It's important that you thread these the right way, not too many turns around the rubber. The instructions are on the pack and once again if you 
go to our website, we've got you a pretty good deal on the type that we use. Now, as well as these springs and snubbers, it's really important that you get the right sort of line. And we recommend three plat nylon. It's got lots and lots of give and it's stretchy. It's also very strong and the easiest line to put splices for eyes or loops. You'll need to size it according to your boat's weight and length. But once again, go to our website and we've got you a deal. What we don't recommend is that you use old sheets, old halyards or old boat lines from your rigging to moor your boat. This type of line tends to have a very low rate of stretch. Now that's not to say that different types of mooring lines or warps are not available. They are, and some of them are very good. In fact, we have a whole set of multi-plat mooring lines, but we don't use them for extended periods, and that's because they don't stretch, or perform over time, as well as the three-plat nylon. That's just our opinion. So let's have a look at the various lines or warps and their positions. Firstly, we have our bow line at the front of the boat. And then at the stern of the boat, there's our stern line. These lines are made off to the bow cleat and, of course, the stern cleat. In the centre of the boat, we have a bow spring and a stern spring, and they're made off to a mid cleat. On the finger pontoon, there are two cleats, one which aligns with our bow and one with our stern. Just while we're talking about lines, spring lines that I've put in this diagram are often referred to as breast lines and technically mooring lines are actually warps but it depends where you're from and who taught you. Let's move on to our bow and stern lines which are fitted with springs. Both our bow line and our stern line have large stainless steel springs and an 8mm length of chain which loops back and goes round the cleat on the dock side. This chain, the green one, is fixed to the spring and a safety chain, the red one, using a large bow shackle. The red safety chain is attached to the other end of the spring using another bow shackle. This other bow shackle then connects to a three strand nylon spliced eye which is on the end of our mooring warp or line. If the spring should fail for any reason, the 8mm chain in red will take up the slack. Where our three strand nylon line or warp connects to the bow shackle we've spliced in an eye to stop it wearing through. I suppose technically you should wire these shackles to prevent them coming undone. We don't bother. We tend to use a Leatherman or a Marlin spike just to drive the pin in and make sure it's home. In order to prevent snatching our breast lines or spring lines have a rubber snubber fitted. Try saying that. We also use nylon three strand on these and it's oversized at 18mm. Being rubber, if they do touch the boat, they won't damage it. The important thing with these is not to put too many turns around the rubber snubber. We'd suggest no more than three turns. And again, go to our website and we think we've got you a deal on rubber snubbers. Winter. Winter is here. Well, not quite. No, not quite, no. <laughs> so we're, uh, we're in the marina at um, Carpers Gate and uh, it really is well protected, but like all marinas, you do get a bit of swell when the wind's in the right direction. And we've decided uh, today we're going to put our sprung lines on. Um, so these are our sprung lines, excuse me, I'm using the big camera, not the GoPro. Actually I'll show you why I'm not using the GoPro. Uh, that, hang on, that is our GoPro battery, it's, it's swollen right up and pushed the casing off. Um, that's one of our GoPro batteries and this is one of our um, drone. drone batteries, yeah, that's it. Yeah, so that you can see should be that profile, and it's swollen up probably, I would guess, 5mm per side, 10mm overall. 
that's one of three, number two of three. Uh, we are waiting for some more batteries to arrive. Anyway, digressing. So we have these springs here, which uh, three years ago we put onto uh, some line, so, and this is uh, three strand nylon, and we've got some tube over there to stop the edges wearing, and we've bought some more three strand nylon, and some of these uh, rubber gonky things uh, as well and today we're going to take our normal lines off and strap the boat up to protect us from um, the swell A, it, the snagging I can't really see it you probably just hear it but the um, the lines snatching and snagging uh, doesn't do the cleats any good and of course uh, it stops you from sleeping and uh, the other thing, it just makes it more gentle overall on the boat and the pontoons and everything. So that's what we're going to do. It's a bit windy for us to talk you right through it. So what I'll do is leave the camera going and um, we can show everybody how we do it. Um, we've also got to tighten our canopy up. Look, our canopy is blowing around. Um, we could take it down. We could take it down. There we go. Right, let's get these chains on. I'll show you how they work. Actually, I could show you how they work while we're in here, and you'll be able to hear me. So, this this is the line that's spliced on. That is the chain. There we go. Let's stretch it all out. So the line is spliced on on that end there that Cindy's got in her hand with an eye. And then this piece of chain goes from one end of the spring to the other end of the spring. If that spring should break, then the line is still connected to this other piece of chain here. And that other piece of chain goes around the davit. So lines go to this line goes to the boat. A bit difficult to see. I wonder if we can zoom. No. That line goes to the boat chain is suspended, bottom chain is a safety chain so that if that spring breaks or wears out the boat still remains connected and the third chain here, sorry second chain here goes around the cleat um, and connects the cleat to the boat line. Let's show you, be easier to show you. Okay, well I hope you can hear me in the wind. First we're going to take the canopy down, take our side shades down so we don't need those, and then we'll put the line on and I will leave the camera running so you can see how, you, how we do it.
So you will notice from the video, and yes it is speeded up, that we're actually replacing one line at a time. And the reason for this is that in the wind we need to be able to adjust the boat just a small amount, as we're doing here, by tensioning the lines or releasing some from them. And that's exactly what I'm doing now. It's quite difficult, but eventually you get it kind of right and then over the next day or so you can just adjust them as necessary. The thing is to have the boat held but not so firmly against the floating part of the pontoon that it's continually rubbing up and down on your fenders or actually damaging the boat. Where the lines are made off at the boat end, that is to your cleats, bow, stern and mid cleat, it's important that you have something to stop any wear. Now, the fair leads will guide the lines through quite easily, but they still wear. Some people use a roll flat hose, which slides over the top of the lines. We prefer a piece of garden hose, or a piece of hose that we've just taken off of the engine when we've replaced all the raw water hoses. That works really well. And of course, it's free, which is one of my favourite words. As we started to fit the spring lines to our centre cleat, the wind got stronger and stronger and you can see it's pushing the boat quite hard away from the dock. And you'll note that the springs are already doing their job on the bow line and the stern line. Okay, let's have a, a quick look. Um, okay, so front line here on the port side has got a spring in it. It goes up to the forward cleat. Our first spring line to centre cleat. At the moment the boat is being blown forward and away. So that rear one is fairly tight. Um, because it's, the boat is being pushed forward. And you see we put the boat, started the boat's engine, put it in gear, pulled it back just to counteract that. So we got the same amount of tension on both of them. Now they aren't really tight. They're, they're loosely tight. And you can see here how that chain works. It goes round the bottom of the cleat, goes round the bottom of that cleat, and then into that shackle and into the same shackle goes a loop of chain so that if that spring should break the boat is still connected to the deck so some hose here just to stop any wear spare line there now when we are moored where we've got slime lines these are long enough to go from the centre cleat right to the pontoon uh, to help the slime line. So that's why these are so long. This one here is just an extra. Our main fenders are protecting us of these four here. And this ball fender here, if the wind comes from where Cindy is. And then the same here. This chain goes round the cleat, goes under the chain to the other shackle and should that spring break, it will be kept in place. Now, one thing I've just noticed, we haven't slidden the rubber chafe 
thing down so I'll do that in a minute so there's a piece of hose there that's got to come round and that's anti-chafe on that line there now I've said this before top tip if you haven't got anti-chafe uh, hoses on your lines um, or you're only going to be in the marine a day or two and you're just using your normal lines where that fair lead and where the dock lines pass through one another put some fairy liquid or washing soap washing up soap there and that will stop that creaking you can you can hear creaking now that's uh because we're being blown on it's quite windy look at our flag and up the top of the mast it's quite windy and i haven't got the dead cat on this camera so there we go that's that's how we do it and it, this works for us of course we've got that other line on the starboard side forward which is pulling the boat away and consequently because it's pulling diagonally opposite that line there so this one here that's pulling the, the forward end of the boat over that way and the stern in that way and you'll see that when these uh, when the wind stops she'll sit really nicely if not we'll just make a few little adjustments and that's how we do it and the next things we'll be taking the sails off we've got a little bit of sail damage to the stitching on the main and here on you can't really see it just there you can see our anti uv strip has got a tiny little tearing it like a crease and I think it's caught it's caught it was flapping on something and it's just caught and torn it I don't know what because there's nothing at that level but anyway so that's us just about ready for winter we've cleaned all the decks off jet washed them off um, at some point in the winter later on we will take the tender off using our lazy boy make it really easy uh, we will jet wash the decks probably a little bit of oxalic acid uh, to clean up any uh, stains and then we'll polish the whole deck and possibly the top sides as we've got this nice finger and you can see there we're nice and tidy could do with a spring in this one but we're okay yeah we're nice and tidy sat in the dock room for another boat very happy so far with this place it's been really good uh, if you want to see a tour of Carpaz Gate let us know in the comments below because I mean it is a fantastic place it's got lots and lots of stuff here indoor swimming pool outdoor swimming pool beach club uh, happy hour bar you know loads and loads of stuff too much to mention now but if you'd like to see all those things tell us in the description because um, it really is first rate um, but we don't know if you like it unless you tell us so tell us what you want to see and that goes for all our videos tell us what you want to see because uh, otherwise we'll just um, you know give you what we think you want to see and it might not to uh, might not correlate as they say right let's uh, get on with the next job so a few of you have asked about the uh, video that we put out midweek it was a YouTube short and also on Facebook as a reel. This is the original footage and what we did in order to get the video to show better the lightning strikes was we froze it at the point or slowed it down um, by about 50 or 60 times and we were able to do that because we shoot in 4k at 60 frames per second so here's a couple of the uh, stills that we managed to take from that 4k video where we slowed it down let me show you
we make these videos for you. We have a pass it forward philosophy. We've always had it. We pass on the knowledge that we've gained over the years to you, to other people, so that you don't make the same mistakes that we've made. And believe me, we've made some big ones. In return, we'd like you to do a couple of things for us. Firstly, hit that like button, share the videos, and subscribe if you haven't already done so. It really makes a difference to us, and it's free. Yep, my favourite word, it's free. All you have to do is click the buttons. If you really like our videos, or they've helped you out, you can buy us a beer. There's a link in the description, and the links are also on our website, www.svmpavlas.com. Finally, if you've really been entertained, you could think about becoming a Patreon. That's www.patreon.com forward slash SV Impavidus. Again, there's a link in the description and on our website. Thanks for watching, guys. Don't forget, sail safe.